Welcome to Family Life Connected. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Pastor Ray and this is Pastor Esther. Hi, we are so thankful that you've tuned in today and uh, we have good word for you. You know, the word of God is our source of strength and peace. Amen. So all of us can run to the word anytime we need it. And we're so privileged that we are able to do that. So today uh, we've been reading Isaiah 41.10, but I'm going to share it out of the Good Word Translation. And it says, don't be afraid because I am with you. That's also don't be worried because I'm with you. Don't be concerned because I'm with you. Don't be uh, you know, insecure about what God can do for us because I am with you. This is God talking to us, guys. I am with you. Don't be intimidated. I am your God. In other words, don't let your circumstance tell you how it's going to be. Instead, let God tell us how it's going to be for us. We're His children, and He provides for His children. He loves His children, and He is right. watching out for right. us. He says here, I will strengthen you. I will help you. My strength and my help come from my God. Mm -hmm. I will support you with my victorious right hand. You know what God wants for each one of us? Victory. Every day all the time and as we look to him as our helper as we look to him as the the god that is more than enough the god that provides where there is no provision for the god that is able to do beyond what we could even imagine that is our god right. and we're so glad you've tuned in today so that you can get to know our god he is so good let's pray right now Father, we just pray and thank you that each one of us would look to you, that we would truly not be afraid because we know that you are with us. Every any time insecurity, thoughts and fear and worry come against us, we can immediately say, you are my God. You are on my side. You will watch over me. I will not be afraid. You are with me. You are my helper. You are the Lord in who I do trust. We thank you, Father, for meeting every need. We thank you for meeting everyone's desires, Father, to overcome because you are the God that gives us victory. We worship you and we give you thanks for victory in each one of our lives and over each circumstance that we face. We are trusting in you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. God is so good. He is faithful. You can depend on God. He's done so much for us and for so many other people. He's proven himself over and over again. You too can trust in him.
We are really living in challenging times right now. It's an, I can't remember any time like this ever uh, in all of my lifetime anyway. People are, are worried, uh, maybe now a little bit frustrated, concerned, and uh, not just about the virus, but also about uh, the economic impact. I should say the negative economic impact on our overall economy and also in our personal lives. Uh, a poll was recently done that said about two-thirds of all Americans are now more concerned with the negative economic impact that's happening uh, because of the lockdown and so forth. And that's especially true here in California. But here's what I know. God will provide. The Lord is our provider. And it's important for us to know that He will provide, that He loves us, that He cares about us, that He is concerned about us, and that He's revealed Himself as the Lord, our provider. In the book of Genesis, chapter number 22, verses 8 and 14, New King James Version, And Abraham said, talking to his son Isaac, Abraham said, My son, God will provide. I love to say it just like that. God will provide. Maybe you can say that with me. God will provide. Doesn't that sound wonderful? God will provide. And then in the uh, 14th verse, Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide provide. Again, the Lord will provide. And, and if you could read it in literal Hebrew, it's like this, the Lord provides. It's just always present tense. It's just always true. So not only does He provide, not only will He provide, He is providing. The Lord provides. The Lord will provide. Now, what's amazing about this statement from Genesis uh, 22, verse number 14, is that it is actually the first of seven redemptive covenant names that God has chosen to reveal Himself by to you and me, His covenant people. And among the Hebrews, names were very significant. Names were important. And in fact, names were descriptive. If you remember the story of Jacob and Esau, uh, Esau, when he was born, uh, apparently, he was a really hairy baby, and so he was named Esau, which means hairy. And, uh, and that's kind of a description of what he was like. Uh, there's a story in the life of, of King David when uh, he comes upon this, uh, this guy named Nabal, and uh, he refuses to help David, and he's being really obstinate and stubborn with King David. And finally, uh, Nabal's wife, Abigail, comes out and intercedes and really saves his life because David 
wasn't going to have any of that. And she finally says to David, listen, King David, uh, he is the way his name is because Nabal means stupid. And she said, he's, he's basically stupid. I mean, his name is stupid. So names really had significance among the Hebrews. Names mean something. So when God reveals himself as provider, he's revealing his nature. He's revealing his character. He's revealing his will. It would be good sometime to do some study on the names of God. Uh, one of God's names is the Lord our shepherd. That's Psalm 23 verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. That's the Lord our shepherd, Jehovah Reah, the Lord my shepherd. This here is a Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. The Lord my provider. Uh, there's the Lord my peace. Uh, there's a Lord who was present with us. Uh, and, and there's these different covenant names like that. The Lord our righteousness. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our protector. These names are really, really important and they reveal God's nature. They reveal his will. They reveal what he will do in our life. So when he says, my name is the Lord your provider, that means it is his nature to provide. It is his will to provide. Just like I, as a father, will do anything I can to provide for my children, and now my grandchildren and, and my son's wives, my daughters-in-law who are now in my family, they have my name. I'll do anything I can to provide for them. Well, how much more our Father God? In one place, Jesus said, which of you being a father, if his son asked for a fish, would give him a serpent? Or if he asked for, for, for an egg, would give him a stone? And he said, if you being human or being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, children. How much more will your Heavenly Father give good things to them that ask? So it is His nature. It is His desire. It is His will to, to provide for you and me. The Lord will provide. The Lord provides. God will provide. So Abraham boldly declared, the Lord will provide. I want to encourage you right now, because, because many right now are facing economic downturns or hardships. Uh, we have people who are out of work, uh, who've been laid off, who've lost hours, who've, who've maybe lost um, clients. Uh, just revenue streams and so forth like that have just gone down everywhere. And listen, we can either sit there and say, I don't know what we're going to do. Or we can say, I don't know what we're going to do, but the Lord is my provider. We can be just like Abraham and boldly declare, God provides. God provides for me. He is my Heavenly Father. The Lord is my provider. Now, to every miracle, there's, there's God's side and then there's our side. God it can always be counted upon to do His part. The real iffy thing is, will we trust Him? Will we believe Him? Will we unlimit His power? Will we unlimit His provision and say, I don't know how God's going to do it. I just know that He will. God's not limited by the pandemic. God's not limited by the market. God's not limited by the economy. God is only limited by our unbelief and by our doubt. But if we will change that into faith, and if we will trust God, there are no limitations on what God can do for you and me. Remember, faith puts no limitations on God, and God puts no limitations on faith. We see a great example of this in the New Testament in the book of Luke, chapter number 5, verses 1 through verse number 9. And uh, it's a story of, of Peter and the miracle catch of fish. And here's the thing that's amazing about this story. Peter almost missed his miracle, even though Jesus was right there with him. Now, one of our building blocks of trust is believing God is with me. And so, yes, God loves me. God is with me. God is for me. His word is true. I can always trust him. These things are true. And even though God is with me, if I don't believe what he says, 
And if I don't obey what he says, I can miss the miracle that he has for me. Always remember, doubt and unbelief are enemies of faith. Let me say it again. Doubt and unbelief are enemies of faith. And Peter almost doubted when Jesus told him what to do to get his miracle. The reason was it didn't make any sense. And we're going to see it right here in Luke chapter 5, verse 1. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and that's the Sea of Galilee, the people were crowding around him and listening to the Word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and that is Simon Peter. And he asked him to put out a little from shore. And then he sat down and he taught the people from the boat. When he finished speaking, he said to Simon, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and they filled both boats so full that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. Now Peter almost missed his miracle, even though Jesus was right there with him. Now what's amazing to me is how frustrated Peter was because they had fished all night long. They'd fished all, they were up all night. They'd throw on their nets, nothing. Move the boat, throw on their nets again, nothing. Move, because fishermen do that, and he's a professional fisherman, and so they try this, they try that, they try this spot, they try that spot. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I've been fishing many, many times, and I gotta tell you, it is an insult to a fisherman to get skunked. And Peter wasn't just fishing as a hobby. That's what his business was. That's his livelihood. That means he had no money. He had nothing to show for all of his efforts. So even though Peter caught no fish, you know what? He was ripe for a miracle because the beginnings of his miracle happened when he thought he had suffered a major setback. Here's what I know. Things aren't always what they seem. Many times what we think is a setback is a setup from God. What we think is a setback is a setup from God. God is getting ready to show himself strong in us. You know, in one verse, the Bible says his eyes, the eyes of the Lord, run to and fro throughout the whole earth looking for someone to show himself strong in. I say, Lord, look at us at Family Life Church. Show yourself strong right here. We'll trust you. We'll believe you. We'll support one another. We'll stand together. We'll believe God for one another. We believe two are better than one. We believe a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Lord, fix your eyes on us. When I think about that promise, I think, Lord, fix your eyes right here. I'm trusting you. You are my provider. And what happened here was Peter was skunk. He didn't catch a single fish. But you know what? Had he caught some fish that night, he would have already gone home. Because when fishermen catch their limit of fish, they pack it up and they go home. They don't just keep on fishing. So had he caught fish the night before, he'd have packed up and gone home. And if he would have done that, he wouldn't have been there to let Jesus use his boat to teach the people the Word of God. 
And if Peter hadn't been there, he wouldn't have heard the word of God. And if Peter hadn't been there, Jesus wouldn't have used his boat and then told Peter what to do. And he never would have experienced this miraculous catch of fish. You see, it's how we look at things. Here's what I know in the Bible. Every miracle begins with a problem. Have you got a problem? Rejoice! The book of James tells us count it all joy when we face major problems. Every miracle begins with a problem. You have a problem? You have just entered into miracle territory. And so Peter was right where Jesus wanted him to be. He was in miracle territory. And so when Jesus said, let down your nets for a catch, he did not say, now Peter, let down your nets and see if anything happens. Peter, let down your nets and see if there's some fish there. Maybe there are. No, 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 no. He said, let them down for a catch. He guaranteed the catch if Peter would obey him. So you see, faith is acting on the Word of God. Faith is obeying the Word of God. And you know, Peter is just like us. He'd been up all night long. He was frustrated. He was tired. They had already begun to uh, wash their nets and, and put them away. He's probably ready for a go home and go right to sleep and try to explain to his wife why he didn't catch any fish. You know how we would do. And he began to kind of complain, Master, we worked hard all night. We toiled all night. We got nothing to show for it. But he caught himself. You know, God is so good. He'll let us catch ourselves. Have you ever complained to God? Oh, God, I, I don't feel like praying. Oh, God, I, I don't forget, like, feel like forgiving that person. God, I just don't feel like going to church today. God, I don't, I don't feel like serving. But, 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 because you say so, I will. God is so good. God is so gracious. He loves us so much. He'll, he'll let us catch ourselves. That's how wonderful He is. And right in the middle of His statement, it registered on Peter. Jesus said, let down your nets for a catch. He didn't say, let them down and see if anything happens. There is no if. In fact, the only if is, will I obey what Jesus said? And that's the only if in your life and my life right now. Will we believe Him? Will we take him at his word? Will we make him our provider? Peter could, could have thought, Jesus, now listen, you know, you're a carpenter, and, and if I need a repair on the boat, I, you can come help me with that. But listen, I'm a fisherman. I'm a professional fisherman. Uh, we, we don't do it like this. It made no sense to him. But he said, Lord, if you say so, at your word, I will. You see, faith is acting on the word. Faith in God is faith in the Word of God. And when Jesus says something, just do it. In fact, one time in John chapter 2, Mary told the servants there, the mother of Jesus, Mary said, whatever he says to you, just do it. And Peter caught himself and said, at your word, because you say so, I will let down the nets. And when he did this, they caught such a miraculous catch of fish, their boat began to sink. I've been fishing lots of times, seen lots of wide open bites, but I've never seen the water line, you know, uh, rise on the side of the boat and the boat go down because of that many fish. But his did. And in fact, it was so miraculous, they had to call their partners to come in another boat. They filled that boat and it began to sink. It was so miraculous. It was so without explanation. Peter was convicted and he fell down at Jesus' knees and said, Lord, uh, go away from me. I'm a sinful man. Jesus never mentioned sin. There was no mention of sin there. But when the power of God comes like that, you and I can feel like I don't deserve this. Isn't it good news that deserve doesn't matter? Isn't it good news that Jesus didn't say, yeah, you are a sinful person and you don't deserve it? He didn't even, he didn't even acknowledge it. In fact, if you go on reading here, Peter, Peter was told by Jesus, you know what, Peter, from now on, you're going to fish for men. And that's when he became a full, fully committed follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. His life was changed on that day, and it all began with a need. You got a problem? Welcome to Miracle Territory. Make the Lord your provider. We see another example of this in the book of Genesis, chapter number 26. And Isaac was experiencing 
famine. And famine in those days meant no rain, and, and they were all farmers, and, and they lived, of course, agriculturally. And when there was no rain, uh, nobody did anything, and nobody planted crops because there was no way to irrigate them. There was no rain. Wells ran dry and all this. And so in Genesis, but, but Isaac wasn't moved by that. And in Genesis chapter number 26, verses 1 and then verse 12 from the NIV, the Bible says, now there was a famine in the land. And then in verse 12, it says, Isaac planted crops in that land. What? He planted crops. It says in the New King James, he sowed. He sowed during the famine. Isaac planted crops in that land. And the same year, in the year of famine, in the land of famine, in the same year, he reaped a hundredfold. He got back a hundred times what he planted because the Lord blessed him. God's not limited by famines. And for all intents and purposes, we are to a certain degree in famine right now in our great nation. But God will provide. God's not limited by famine. He is not limited by a virus. He is not limited by a pandemic. He is not limited by the market going up or going down. He is not limited by unemployment numbers. He's only limited if we doubt him. He's only limited if we don't take him at his word. Isaac did which didn't did that which made no sense. You know the Bible says in Proverbs 20 verse 24, the Lord directs our steps. So why try to understand everything along the way? If you're going to try to understand everything, instead of take God at His word, which is faith, my friends, you're going to have a hard time in this life. God's going to put us in situations where we are required to trust Him. He's going to grow us. He's going to stretch us. He's going to challenge us. And where we say, okay, Lord, just like Peter said, I, I've, I've done it my way, and I've got nothing to show for it, but because you say so, I will. At your word, I will. And that's what Isaac did. He planted crops in the year of famine. See, this is no time to hold back. This is no time to be fearful. Haven't we seen enough already people hoarding stuff up right now because they're driven by fear? This is the time to be generous. This is the time to help somebody else. This is the time to get our eyes off of ourselves and look on the fields for they are right already, ripe already for harvest. This is a marvelous opportunity for us to show our faith to those who are on the fence, who are not really sure about God and how good He is when they see our faith in God. When we see the Lord our peace manifesting His peace in us and we refuse to worry and our needs are met and we're walking in stability and we're not walking in fear, that's going to draw people like a moth to a flame. What is it? You know, it's Jesus. It's not just a way of thinking. It's a relationship with a living Savior. Come, pray with me. I will introduce you to Him. Isaac sowed in famine and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. You see, the Lord will provide, and He is not limited by outward circumstances. God blessed Isaac during the severe famine. Why? Because Isaac trusted God. Because Isaac had faith in God. Now, let me give you four things I know about faith. Number one. Faith is believing before I see it. Faith is believing before I see it. If I see it, I don't need to believe anything. I can see it. That's why the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. That's why the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. I've got to believe it before I ever see it. The world says seeing is believing. God says that's exactly backward. God says believing is seeing. I've got to believe it before I see it. Number two, 
Faith is obeying even if I don't understand it. Peter had no way of understanding. How can I let down my nets right now in the daytime in deep water? We fished all night. Night time's a time to fish. Why is this carpenter telling me? But wait, wait, wait. He's the son of God. It may not make any sense, but he said it. I'm going to do it. I don't have to understand everything. My, my friends, I don't understand everything about my car, but it works and I get to where I want to go. I don't understand everything about uh, my satellite TV, uh, but I'm glad it works. And when it doesn't, I'm not happy. I don't understand about everything, how the internet works, but I'm even more unhappy when it's not working. How about you? I don't have to understand everything to work everything. And so, so it is with faith. Faith is obeying. It's an issue of obedience. And God is going to challenge you and me and allow us to be put in situations where we take him at his word. And we obey even though we don't understand it. Faith, number three, faith in God is faith in his word. If you say, well, how do I have strong faith? Believe the Bible is the word of God. You know, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God has provided the means whereby every one of us can be strong and giants in faith by taking God at his word. Faith in God is faith in his word. It's more than just knowing God's out there somewhere and believing, you know, that God is real and, you know, or saying, you know, I'm not an atheist. I'm not an agnostic. No, no, no. It's more than that. It's taking God at his word. Faith in God is faith in his word. Peter said, at your word, I will let down the nets because you say so. I will let down the nets. So faith is believing before I see it. Faith is obeying even if I don't understand it. Faith in God is faith in his word. And number four, faith will move the mountains in my life. No mountain of fear, be moved. Mountain of debt, be moved. Mountain of lack, be moved. Mountain of worry, be moved. Faith will move the mountains in my life. Now, God's our provider. In Philippians chapter 4, verse number 19, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So here is what I want you to do to receive God's provision. Number one, trust God to provide everything you need. By that I mean this, make him your source. Make him your provider. Just say it, God, you're my provider. The Lord provides. God, I make you my provider. So trust God to provide everything that you need. Number two, pray and ask God for whatever it is you need. Just because God knows about it, we need to pray. Jesus said, your father knows what you need before you ask him. We still need to ask. Prayer is what makes that connection with God. The Bible says, let your request be made known to God. So pray. Tell God what you need. Pray. Ask God for whatever it is you need. Number three, thank God in advance. This is where faith comes in. Thank God in advance for supplying everything you need. But that I mean thank God before you ever see it. Faith believes you got it before you get it. Faith believes I have it now. Faith believes I have it before I ever see it. So thank God in advance for supplying everything you need. And then number four, expect God to provide everything that you need. It is, I cannot stress enough to live in, a, in an atmosphere of expectancy. Expect God. Every day, look for your harvest. Every day, expect your answer. Every day, expect the blessing of God. I, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of living 
with a spirit, if you will, a spirit of expectation. I expect the favor of God. 2020 is our year of favor. Talk about something not making any sense. 2020, our year of favor. And yet we know God gave us that word for Family Life Church in 2020. And then this thing hits out of the blue. And I'm sitting here thinking, you got to be kidding me. And yet people who are believing it were seeing favor. We just heard about one guy who, who had been believing and praying. Somebody in our church is uh, one of their family members praying and believing for a job. Finally got it. So thankful the pandemic hit just like that. They lost it. And they're like ah, feeling down and discouraged. Yeah, okay, well, God's good. And, and then somebody saw where somebody was hiring, let this person know, then went and applied, uh, brought them in for an interview, came to find out they were perfectly qualified for this particular job. It was something they had experience in already and it ended up being a better job with better pay and better benefits. Ha, that is favor. See, it was miracle territory. You don't let a setback, uh, you know, make you sit back. God's arranging for a comeback for you. It's a setup from God. We just heard about somebody else, one of our college students, uh, with major, major uh, student, you know, student loan debt, saying, you know, I'm, tr I'm just trusting God. This seems like it's an impossible amount of money to pay. And all of a sudden this thing hit. Well, because this thing hit and now they're having to be online for their classes, uh, they decided to forgive all the student loans. Yes, that is the favor of God. I cannot stress enough. Expect your blessing. Expect your provision every single day. God is your provider. Let me pray for you. Lord, thank you. I pray for my friends right now in the name above all names, the name of Jesus. And I thank you that you are our provider. In fact, right now, we make you our provider. We boldly say the Lord is my provider. God supplies my every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Lord, provide for every need. You know what kind of needs are there, what kind of lack is there, what kind of challenges we're facing. You know right where we are. And you knew ahead of time we were going to be at this time right now. And you've already made ample provision in advance. So by faith, we believe we receive every need met. And friends, if you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, would you pray this with me right now? Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and rose again from the dead. Come into my heart. In your name I pray. Amen. Friends, God is our provider. Let's continue to trust Him. I pray this has helped you today. And, and would you share this with somebody? Chances are you know somebody who's going through some challenges right now. And would you just uh, share this with them? If you want to give, and thank you to all the Family Life Church family for, for tithing and giving your offerings and sending your gifts, you can do so. The easiest way is our text to give. You can text any amount to uh, area code 626-624-4374. You can give online, and you can actually set up just online giving. Uh, at our website at www.flchurch.tv. Just scroll down to the Give Online uh, button there. Be sure also for your kids, we have all kinds of kids activities and stuff on the homepage. Be sure you click on there for the kids' lessons and activities. Uh, you can also mail your gift in if you'd like. Many of you are doing that to our P.O. Box, Family Life Church, uh, P.O. Box 637, Glendora, California, 9174. Zero. God bless you all. Let's trust God because He is our provider. God bless you all. Thank you for joining today.